If you're using Jira and ServiceNow and you wish both tools can talk to each other, then today's video is going to be just for you because I'm going to show you how we can use a marketplace application made by my good friends over at GetEnt, and we're going to be looking at ServiceNow Jira two-way integration. And don't forget to check out those links down below as you definitely want to start a free 30-day trial to this what I think is a pretty cool tool because it takes so much headache out of the equation. Here I am within the Atlassian marketplace and I've already looked up ServiceNow and we're going to be looking at the ServiceNow Jura two-way integration, enterprise friendly by my good friends over at GitEnt. Now, while you're there looking them up, if you have other tools, like if you need Jura to Jura, Jura to Azure DevOps, Salesforce, Asana, Monday, ClickUp, GitLab, they do so many more, so check them all out. Now we're just simply going to start a free 30 day trial here and we're going to let this install so that I can now do the integration. Now, what makes this application a little bit unique? Well, there's a couple of factors. Number one, and I'm going to show you this part is the user interface. When it comes to these integration tools, it's a very hard problem to solve, right? You have two completely different tools that somehow through some magic need to talk to each other. And this app does it so easily, right? Getting two tools to talk to each other is a very, very hard problem to solve. And this team has managed to get that problem solved and they do it in a very intuitive way. Number two is price. When it comes to integrating Jira with another tool, especially when you look at other options in the marketplace, you usually have to buy two licenses, the Jira license for the app that we just installed, and then a similar app or a similar payment that needs to be done to that source vendor, right? So you may have to go through ServiceNow and buy or pay them to actually then be able to get your data out, right? So it's two payments. So with this method, with this particular app that we're going to be reviewing today, it's just one payment. We are simply just paying for this ServiceNow app connector inside of Jira. So you don't have to pay ServiceNow. You're just going to pay your Jira. And with that, you have the flexibility of Atlassian billing, which is either you can pay annually if you are really committing to this whole thing and you need to pay for the whole year. Other integrations, you require you to pay for the whole year, even if you're only going to use it for a couple of months. And then obviously number two is that last thing lets you do monthly billing if you are on monthly billing. So you can do this for two, three, four months, whatever it takes for you to do that migration or that data sync, right? So you pay as much as you need. So that's a little couple of differences. So, and so let's get this integration going between Jira and ServiceNow. Let's take a look. So let's jump into the tool. All we need to do is click on apps, click on Jira to ServiceNow integration, and then wait a couple of seconds for it to load. Now, as it's loading, you're going to be able to see that interface, right? So we're going to click agree. Yes, we accept. Okay. New updates, right? And so there's a lot of stuff happening here. They're walking you through all the steps. So this is one of the things that I really like about this app too. And you're going to see this pattern throughout the rest of this video is that even though, as I mentioned, this whole getting two tools to talk to each other is a very hard problem to do, they walk you through it. So we have this video, we have auxiliary videos that they provide documentation. There's just so much happening. I'm going to try to show you everything, but it's going to be a little overwhelming, right? Because there's a lot of guides here. There's a lot of help so that you don't feel like you're alone in this really, really difficult journey. So in order to start our first integration, we are going to click on this little workflows over here, and this is going to take us to our create integration. If you had existing integrations, it would have a list of all your integrations. And as I mentioned, since this can connect with other tools like Jira to Jira or Jira to ADO, right? It'll just show you everything here. So I'm just going to simply click on create integration and then you have to pick, is it a continuous sync? That means that the two tools are basically talking to each other continuously. So a change in one reflects in the other and vice versa, or is it a migration? Are we just simply moving data from one instance to another? Right? So it's up to you which way you're going to go about this. But for this video, we're just going to do a continuous sync. And I believe this is the most common use case. And so here we are, as I mentioned, really, really easy to use interface and we have two apps to connect, right? So connect the first one, example, Jira. And then as you can guess it, we're going to connect ServiceNow in a few moments. Um, there's also a guide me that you can click on and it's going to walk you through some of these steps as well so that you don't feel like you're all alone. So now we're going to click on connect app. And for the first one, we want to connect to Jira. So I'm going to do that. We're going to type in the URL of our Jira. And again, I do have to do a call out. There's a watch connection setup video that is right here. So as you're going through the steps, this app is doing a really good job of just giving us helpful tips or instructions on how to do these things. I'm going to click on next. And now I need to log in and I'm going to put in my token. So once you have that, we're simply going to select the connection over here. 
And then we're going to pick a project. So it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to go with my ARN demo here, click connect. And now I have established a connection on the Jira site. We're not quite done yet. This is step one of many, but the next step is to not connect with ServiceNow. So let's go take a look at that part. So we're going to click on connect app on the other one, right? We already did the Jira one. And this is where we're going to select ServiceNow. Now again, they have a lot of options. So you can take a look at what's on here and you can even request a new app shortcut, right? Check out if you have other tools, but again, very, very easy integration. So here we go. ServiceNow. So I'll put in my URL for my ServiceNow instance. I'm going to select my username and then we're going to put in our password. Click on add after our password has been accepted. Now it's time for us to select our connection. So we're just going to do the connection we just created right now. And then we're going to click connect. And that's it for this first immediate part, which is basically we have Jura and ServiceNow connected. But as you can see by the blinking blue button on the screen, it is time to start mapping types. And so I'm going to simply click on this plus button here. And this is going to walk us through the next steps of this integration, which is getting Jira to talk with ServiceNow. So let's check this out. So on the Jira side, we got to pick an issue type. And these are the issue types that are available in my project. Now I'm just going to do one, but you are more than welcome to do all the ones that you need to do. So I'm going to click on service request over here. And then I got to find something that maps to the same thing or a similar thing on the ServiceNow side. Again, your configurations are going to be all up to you. Now, I don't really use ServiceNow, so I'm just going to pick a problem task because that looks like the right one to pick. And I'm going to click add. Now, once we're done with this part, we're not quite done yet because at this point, all we have done is created a connection with Jura and a connection with ServiceNow. And we've told this integration tool that we want this issue type from Jura to talk with this issue type from ServiceNow, but there's still so much more to do. So let me show you the next step. So once you have this first initial issue type connected, you do have the ability to add more. This is all up to you. And this is going to be dependent on how many issue types and different configurations that you have available. But I'm just going to show you once because once you do it for one, you just replicate it over and over and over. So once we have that, the next thing we want to do is we want to do a couple of other mappings with the fields, right? Because we now know the issue type, but now we got to go into the fields and talk about the fields. So I'm going to click on this right here. And this is going to bring me to the first thing that we got to map, which is we have a title in Jura. What should it be in service now and vice versa, right? And this tells us, is it a vice versa thing or is it one directional or the other, right? And so I'm just going to accept the defaults for here, but I implore you to really sit through this. This I would say is the tricky part of this whole integration because this is where you got to put your thinking cap on and go, okay, I have data in Jura. This is what it looks like. These are the fields that it's in in Jura. And then I have them over in ServiceNow. Which one should translate? I recommend you write these things down on paper before we jump into the tool, because by the time you're in this step, it's a little too late, right? Like it's expecting you to know what you're doing at this point. So you're just going to slow things down if you don't already know what you're trying to do here. Now I'm just going to accept these defaults because I just want to prove to you that it works. So I'm going to leave these here. Next up are your statuses. Uh, very similar to the fields, your statuses are not just like text fields, right? It's a drop down with specific values and different workflows are going to exist in the different tools. So in this screen here, we're going to pick what do the different options mean, right? So first of all, what's the field in Jira? It's a status field. What's the similar like field inside service. Now they call it state. Now we go down to the bottom. We have closed that one's done for us, but we can map if we have like in progress, what does in progress mean inside of service now. So I'm going to select work in progress and click add. And again, you just go through the motions and add all your statuses as appropriate based on your requirements. So once you have the statuses done, we can come over to comments and attachments. And so in this first top section, we're going to be talking about synchronizing comments. You're going to enable whether it's both ways, right? If you comment in one, it goes over to the other and vice versa, or you can pick only to Jira or only to service now. So it's all up to you and your configurations. But as you can see, this UI is very, very easy, right? It's guiding you. It's, it's just super clear as to what's expected and what the tool is enabling you to do. In this case, we can move things over and you can put conditions, you can select attributes, right? And so it's all up to you to customize the way you need it, the way you want it based again on your specific requirements. And this UI is so easy to use. And for the price of only having to pay for Jira, 
and not having to worry about service now it just makes it a little bit better as you keep scrolling down you have some options to add your comments as private in jira or add them as private in service now so there's a conversation you're going to want to have right because the user may exist in service now but they may not exist in jira and vice versa so it's really up to you um, bringing them private if you just want to retain the data but not necessarily care who's making the message right you have different options here and then you can go down to the bottom we can synchronize attachments this is another biggie um, similar to the comments we can enable the attachments bi-directional, we can delete the attachments, we can make the attachments public, right? Or we can insert them as a comment. And so you have all those different options there. So once you're done with all of this, so we do have an advanced section here where you can customize or create and update actions. You can turn that on and off. Uh, you can do a hierarchy over here and synchronize your hierarchy if you have a customized hierarchy, but we're not gonna get into those details in this video. Now, once you're done with all your mappings there, all you're simply gonna do is click apply and we're done with that part. So up next, we now need to give this integration a name. So we're gonna call it Jira to service now. Actually, I'm gonna call it Jira and I like what Git and does when they do this and call it service now because it's gonna be bi-directional and we're gonna click the create button over here. So this is going to save our configuration. Very, very important. So once you give it a name and you saved it, it is now time to actually create the filter conditions that are going to be triggering these syncs because you don't want this thing always just firing off, right? That's not going to be very efficient on performance. So what I'm going to do is on the Jira side, I'm going to click on this little filter over here. And this is going to basically ask me what and when do you want to filter? Like when should we run, right? When should these items go? And so we can have something for when uh, new items are created, when all items are impacted or for synced items, right? So I'm just gonna do a new item and I'm gonna look for the assignee. And if the assignee equals Alex, I'm gonna click on add filter and that's gonna be my trigger point, right? So I'm gonna click apply here. And that's basically saying, if you have a new ticket on the Jira side and the assignee equals Alex, send that one over, okay? Because that's essentially what I want synced. Now you get to customize what this looks like, right? And you get to create the criteria either on the Jira side or on the ServiceNow side, it's very simple. If you want it on ServiceNow, you click over here, right, and do the same thing over there. But again, I'm not too familiar with ServiceNow, so I'm just gonna do it on the Jira side. Now, while we're on the topic of filters, I do wanna let you know that because ServiceNow doesn't use projects, it doesn't make sense to sync a Jira project with a ServiceNow project, because that doesn't exist. But what you can do instead is connect your Jira project with an assignment group inside of ServiceNow that way only specific tickets or issues that belong to a specific assignment group are the ones that are gonna be synced between Jira and ServiceNow. Now that I've shown you how to do it the hard way, let me show you how to do it the easy way. Since my last video, Gitter has introduced a new feature called Quick Build, and this is really, really magical. Watch how easy it is to create these connections and establish this integration. Check this out. So over here, all I've done is connected to Jira and connected to ServiceNow individually, but they're not integrated. They're not designed to talk to each other just yet. Now, you could do all the extra work that we just did, or you can click on this quick build button here, click on this build button over here, and then watch the magic happen. Okay, and just like that, after a few moments, the connection is gonna be established, and then what it believes are gonna be the best mappings, right? It's gonna take items from Jira and items from ServiceNow, and it's gonna integrate them for us, and it's just gonna do all the extra work based on issue types, based on all the other stuff, right? Of course, you can review all of this and decide what you wanna keep or not keep or modify, but this is gonna do a lot of the heavy lifting for us, so you just have to hit apply if you like everything, and just like that, we're basically done. Now just a couple of tweaks and you're ready to go. So much, much easier than doing it all manually. Give it a try. And now I'm gonna go into Jira. And so I'm gonna go into a project and I do believe I need to go into the project that I initiated for this, right? So it was demo, demo service project right here. I'm gonna create a brand new request and we're gonna do the service request because that's the one we had synced earlier and test to service now. And then I'm gonna go down and hit create. And once it's been created, I'm going to assign it to myself because that should be the trigger, right? So I'm gonna change the assignee to me right here. And then we wait, right? So at this point, we're gonna go back into get end and we're going to watch the runs over here. So there's a home button over here that lets you see when the rules have ran, how many items have been synced and how many syncs have been performed. And so we're gonna wait. This is on an automatic, just kind of its own thing, doing its own thing. And so we do get to play a little bit of a waiting game here, but in a few moments, we're gonna see our data 
moseying on by over to ServiceNow. So once the sync runs, we're going to see that there's a last run right here. We're going to click into that and then we're going to see what actually happened. And so as you can see, this is the issue that triggered it inside of Jura and it is synced with this ServiceNow issue. And so if I click on that and open it up, you're going to see that that ticket demo 27 that we created inside of Jira Service Management is now effectively inside of ServiceNow. And now, of course, any updates and all that good stuff is going to be bidirectionally synced based on those settings that we set up. As you can see, this is such an easy tool to set up, right? In a few minutes, we're able to get Jira and ServiceNow, which is a really, really complex behemoth of a tool working. And best of all, the UI is just so easy to use. You don't have to code anything. You don't need to be super, super IT uh, savvy to be able to do this. Anybody should be able to just point and click, follow the guides, follow this video, and be able to get these two very complex tools talking to each other with just a few clicks. So definitely use that link down in the description to start your free 30-day trial and let me know if you enjoyed it or if you actually were able to use it successfully for your team because I know I've used it personally and uh, this is a really cool tool. So anyways, that's it for this video. If you liked it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already and don't forget to check out those links down in the description down below. Thanks and I'll see you in the next one.